Did you press the record yet? I think I pressed the record. If we did, we just do it again. But hopefully, it's no. Recording. What? <laughs> okay, man. Yeah, it's recording. I see it. I see it. It's recording. Summer is almost here. Summer is around the corner, JR. It's getting really, really warm. What lately. do you think I'm wearing? I'm wearing summer clothes already. He's ready to go down south to Mexico or Cancun or somewhere I'm tropical. I was thinking somewhere close, Catalina Island, San Clemente Island. Oh, that's, that's not that far. So, yeah. today is May 28th, 2021. This is the last Friday of the month of May. And we're going to June next week, right? Next mm -hmm. week, yes. We have a couple more days next week. Uh, then we have Memorial Day. The raffle is today. You guys watch it in the early morning. Mm -hmm. The raffle is going to happen later around 10, I think. 10 to, 10 to 11, 10 to uh, 11. If you guys are watching it at night, well, congratulations to the raffle winners. Right, congratulations. And we have two more, uh, it's a Memorial Weekend, and we have uh, one more day, one or two more days. To oh yeah, quick reminder. Tuesday will be June, yes. Uh, we'll be off on the 31st Yes, of Monday, May. Yes, there's no show. That means no Zoom and Zoom, no daily show. Daily show on Monday, because I'm mm, yeah. But I can ask Liz if she's going to make a special episode, you know. I mean, it's not necessarily a daily show. Right. right, uh, right but right. probably like some extra episode. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm having a bad morning so far because my coffee that I'm drinking, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know why it's strawberry flavor. The only flavor I had a whole strawberry in. Strawberry is okay with me. I like okay. strawberry. I like it as a fruit, but not as a flavor. I got three uh, drinks that I like: strawberry, <clears throat> chocolate, and vanilla. So I'm okay with that. So you like the your Neapolitan then? Yeah, but not the whole flavor in one one drink <laughs> because that's gonna be weird. That tastes disgusting. Okay, whatever. Moving on to today's. Oh my Make voice. our <clears throat> mood better, Joe. What's our All right. So you know. Since Sunday, right? Sunday was a little bit cool. No, Sunday was cooler. Then on Monday, it jumped up 50 degrees higher. It was around the 90s. Are you talking about this past Sunday? Yeah, this I wasn't paying Sunday. attention. This past Sunday. Yeah, it got really hot. So oh. today's observance is National Heat Awareness Day, right? It's nice to stay warm and cozy, <laughs> but you know. I thought you have some uh, awesome introduction for that. Or no, I'm just, just focusing like. Yeah. Like, I see how the sun is so bright, right? It is a ball of plasma. Remember, sun is gravity. Good. Right. Remember, sun is good, but anything that is too much is not good. Moderation. Moderation. Question, yeah. JR. If you're going out in the sun, what do you need to wear? I'm already wearing it. What? A hat. No. Why? To protect your skin. Oh, sunscreen. Right. Why do you need to wear sunscreen? To screen the sun out. In to block the sun out and uh, protect it from uh, or sunblock. I should have yeah, I should have just said sunblock. To block the sun from damaging your skin, mm -hmm. right? And you don't want some people don't want to be too tan. Some people have a lot of melanin in their body, so they're prone to tanning much quicker than other people are. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh, what's that? Well, part I, thing? I prefer looking for shades instead of actually applying sunblock. But of course, yeah, I do apply sunblock. Besides the brightness, right? When you, what do you do to protect your eyes from the brightness of the sun? I think it has also something with... What are you pointing at? Your hat! The brim of your head protects the sunlight from hitting your eyes. But there's something else you can oh, wear okay. around your eyes. <laughs> I was gonna say sunglasses. Sunglasses, exactly. But what kind of sunglasses do I recommend or you know you should get to wear to protect? What is that thing you said? Polaroid? Polarized. 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 Polarized is the what? Uh, the camera company. The camera, okay. Right. You're not going to wear the cameras in your eyes. So the polarized sunglasses, right? They pretty much separate the wavelength of the sun, right? The sun is one light, but it's multiple colors. You just don't see it because they all Spectrum. blend together. Yeah, yes. exactly. And the polarized sunglasses really separates them from the harmful lights that enter your eye. And besides sunblock, sunscreen, hat, sunglasses, mm -hmm. you can wear what? Oh wait, not wearing. Yeah, well, yeah you can it's wear, not wearing. You can wear like short sleeve shirts, shorts, you know, slippers. To, uh, yeah, to, to make it more comfortable <clears throat> for you. But in terms of, uh, in other terms of the sun, right? Besides the light, what does the sun provides? It's in the title itself. Heat. Heat, okay. So dressing cool can keep you uh, warm, but if you are overheated, uh, what do you need to do? What do you need to put in your body to regulate? Water. Water, correct. Yeah, stay hydrated. You don't want heat stroke. You don't want right. to, uh, you know, pass out in the heat. Yeah, heat stroke is uh, it's a, it's a very real thing, you know. Um, 
I was gonna say I was gonna add if you're living up north where it snows a lot uh, you may you may not notice the heat because of the the snow around you but it actually could still you know hurt you damage you does uh, the problem is uh, it's harder for you to feel it yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, you know because uh, because of the temperature yeah but the heat still goes through and it right. could you know sk uh, still damage your skin so uh, you have seen like people in like uh, the Middle East right they wear long flowing clothes mm-hmm yeah, the reason why they do that, right? Because you feel like when not because wear... they're feeling cold. No, well, obviously, yeah, yeah it's like sun in the desert, right? Because when when in California when it's hot, right, you wear short sleeves to cool yourself, right? Mm -hmm. In the Middle East, it's more of like a dry heat. So what they do is they wear long, flowy clothes that traps air. Mm. You know, it traps air, it keeps you cool. That's how you ventilate. You uh, not ventilate. You yeah, kind of like ventilation, cooling system, the natural cooling system of the body. So. Remember, stay hydrated. Wear appropriate clothing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, wear a protective sunscreen or sunblock to keep the UV lights from damaging your skin. Or the easiest thing to do, yes. probably stay out of the sun if it's too hot. True, you can do that too. You can, uh, you know, stay in the shade. Stay in the shade, yeah. Carry an umbrella. Or just relax till the evening where the sun is a little bit less harsh. Yeah. Yeah. So, remember, be aware of the heat. Summer is coming along. You know, gotta get that beach bod ready. Are you talking about my, my muscles, Joe? Yeah, your muscles are really popping. Look at that. Look at you that. Know what, you know what would help you the with your muscles? The not doing it justice. I don't think you can have enough muscle. You keep eating international hamburger right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you be aware of the heat. You stay in the shade while munching on hamburgers. What's, an, what's another favorite pastime that we have? You know, besides... Uh, what's a, this is a weird looking hamburger though, the picture that you have. So like it has bacon, bacon cheese. It's like a Kashmir Western burger, you know? Okay. Well, like, the bacon doesn't look like it's cooked well. <laughs> no. I don't know, because I prefer the... You uh, want the A little crispy. bit crunchy. Or cr crispy, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So what is the, uh, so next Monday will be a Memorial Day, right? Mm -hmm. What is the next upcoming holiday, the big one? Besides Father's Day in July. And you probably see these guys a lot. These well, in guys. July, yeah, but next month will be June. So yeah, that's it. Next, like, that's it. After Father's Day, that's what I'm Oh, saying. okay. So the 4th of July, yeah. Yeah, 4th of July, that's when you see this guy. Barbecue. More prominent, right? Barbecue. Barbecue. What is a hamburger, Joe? Is it made of ham? No. Then why is it called a hamburger then? I think it's like named after a man or a place. I don't know. The origin is a little bit sketchy. Do you know? Really? No, I don't. But uh, some people say it was made in the city of Hamburg, and they it got could it be because uh, there's a person who the was words, named after hamburger. I don't. Well, know. <laughs> it, it could be because the history of sandwich actually start started from a place named Sandwich. I thought it was the Duke of Sandwich, or oh, yeah, the Duke of Sandwich, yeah, which Duke is sandwich. the Duke, you know, from that place. You know, so. for me, food, right? I really don't know where it comes from. I just eat it. <laughs> <laughs> So, but the main component is what? It has a meat, some kind of protein, right? So uh -huh. people have vegetarian But we, when you say hamburger, is it meat burger? Because, it, you know, these days we already got like the non-meat burger, like yeah, veggie yeah. burger. Like I said, it's just protein. Okay. A form of protein. Okay. So people put uh, veggie burgers there or some kind of like a meat substitute, some protein. Mm -hmm. But traditionally, Sweet. traditionally it is a beef patty. Yeah between two buns bread buns and just like what we always tell you guys moderation right here's a question for you guys yes uh what's your favorite hamburger where do you get your favorite hamburger uh tell us in the comment section below mine personally i used to like umami burger but they had to probably change their menu right uh when the pandemic hit Right. Uh, you know, I guess to 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 work on their financial uh, thing, but more economically sound. Yeah, but it you know it, it quality dip. Quality. Yeah, yeah. There there was a quality dip, unfortunately. So uh. for me, um, but my go-to would be In and Out. You know, it's good. Yeah. Uh, five Guys. I think Five Guys. The Habit. Which one is the one that promotes peanut oil? Five Guys. Five Guys. Yeah. Like you can literally get free peanuts yeah, from their store it, before. pretty much everywhere. Uh, Carl's Jr., you have Carl's Jr., you have the classic McDonald's, Burger King, you have Wendy's, uh, what other places? The thing I like about Carl's Jr. is the before when they had the uh, yes. the natural burger, uh -huh. but they, I don't think they have it 
now, but they used to. And yeah, I, I like it because the bun is sweet. I don't know. I'm a sweet tooth. Yeah, you do have you do have a sweet tooth. Yeah. Uh, unless, can I see what else? I do like bacon in there. Uh, There's Wendy's. Patty, you can do yeah, Wendy's. Wendy. I'm trying to think other burger places. Believe it or not, Jollibee has burgers. Yeah, Jollibee has a lot. So <laughs> fried chicken, spaghetti. It's like party food. It is. It's comfort food. Comfort food. I try other things of uh, think of other places where I can get burgers. Na name something not so common type of burgers. You know, burgers have always been the same. It's just usually a uh, protein meat, meat patty, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's the topping are different. Some people yeah, use uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. pineapple, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, island burgers. I can get that some their time, sometimes there too. So it's, a, it's like what? Hawaiian burgers? Yeah, you have a teriyaki, uh, what do you call it? Chicken? Sauce, oh, wow. Chicken, beef. It's like the flavoring. You have the pineapple, obviously. You know, some... Um, Onions, you can go around onions. You like mushrooms, right? Just mushroom I love burgers. mushrooms. I, I love the shiitake mushrooms, though. Uh, you have uh, like, pineapple in the tropical one, yeah. I'm okay with that. You know, sometimes yeah. the bread really matters too. Some people use the, the classical, uh, the classic um, sesame bun, right? Mm -hmm. The wheat bread. Some people use uh, brioche, uh, different kinds of, uh, you know, what do you call it? Sandwich. Buns. Buns, right. Burgers are not sandwiches. Sesame is, uh, yeah. What's the difference? Oh yeah, the meat patty and other stuff too. Yeah. Um, you can see a lot of cheese, right? You have your cheddar cheese, cheese. your pepper jack, your Kobe, your... I think some people put mozzarella. Really? I, oh. I know, it's just weird. I like pepper jack because it gives a little kick yeah, to yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the food. And normally you're not a person who likes to eat spicy stuff. Yeah, but I mean the, the spiciness of... The spiciness of pepper jack is kind of like wasabi. It doesn't stay. It doesn't stay for a long time. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the, a, it's a I just like the kick. Short lasting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> I'm trying to think right now. Uh, you know, there's like double patties, right? Oh you, man, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you're the what's a classic uh, burger that has two patties and uh, another bread in the middle? What is that? Called? Oh, uh. Can I don't I know. Think it, I think I two layer, up. three layer. Uh, it's just two patties, one layer of uh, bread in the middle. No, you got like a bread patty, bread pot, patty, bread. Yes, exactly. It's a two-story building. Yes. What is it? Come on, it's a classic. I don't know. I I give you the restaurant, okay? McDonald's. Uh, well, yeah, I know it's from McDonald's because I saw the picture, but I just couldn't remember the name. It's big. Big Big Mac. Oh, this is a Big Mac. Big Double Mac. Big Mac. Yeah, you can go around the Big Mac. You have like thousand island dressing. You can put pickles. Oh, I, I'm not a fan You're of pickles. pickles. Yeah, I can... that's why I like burgers with no pickles. Like by default, that I don't have to tell them. Right, right. Every time I order some uh, some kind of burger, and mm -hmm. I I would ask them like, uh, does it come with pickles? And then you know uh, they're going to tell me, oh, it doesn't come with pickles. So I'm I, like, I can ah. do I can do without, with or without. I don't mind really. <laughs> but one thing I like is uh, grilled caramelized onions. Oh yes, yes, yeah, yes. Um, turkey burger is good too. There's another uh, meat sesame besides uh, beef. Mm hmm. Um, chicken, chicken. Yo, oh, I love chicken. Chicken burger. Chicken sandwich or so mm. good. What? Well, they call it chicken sandwich, but is it, is it a burger? See, that's this th is so confusing. That's where, yeah, yeah. Th that's where I get confused. Like, uh, who gets the right to call them their their uh, food burger? The food know? king, obviously. <laughs> the food president. <laughs> you, oh, you mean Burger King? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, king moving on. Burgers? Moving on to national. It's a hamburger day. Enjoy your favorite hamburger outside grilling the sun, but watch out for the heat, right? Yeah. Don't forget, uh, tell us what's your favorite burgers or where you get your favorite burgers. Right. Burger. Besides a uh, burger that you can grill, you can grill some brisket. Oh, man. Now we are talking about lunch. So this is a beef brisket. Be a part of the cow, right? I'm going to give you a quiz. You know where? Yes. Where on the yes, cow? Yes, I know. Okay, uh, uh well actually I'm going to guess. Yo go ahead, go ahead, guess. I'm gonna i I'm gonna guess at the the body of the cow. Okay. Is that is that, okay. is that, is that be, too big? Be, be a little bit more specific, Jerry. Uh, that's too big. Alright, uh too the, the the back of the cow? No. No, I missed. <laughs> Come on, besides the back, what's in front of the back? What, what's in front of the back? What's the chest? It's the it's the tummy. The chest really. Okay, the chest. So there this is go. the chest in the breast area, right? And this muscle is really uh, not tender. It's the opposite of tender. It's more uh, chewy, right? It's more. Uh, it has a lot of connective tissue because this muscle here. It's holds... not really getting worked out. <clears throat> no, it's getting worked out a lot because it's actually holding up the cow's body. All right. You remember right. the cow doesn't stand up. It's on this all fours. 
and it's holding the weight of his body. Right, his chest, right, right. So, how do you make meat more tender? You you pound it? You tenderize it. <laughs> <laughs> well, by pounding it. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. You use a, a metal hammer, a hammer, and to you know break down the connective tissue, make it a little oh, bit more tender, right? That sounds painful. And you can bake it. You can boil it, and you can grill it. Grill it. That's barbecue. About, yeah. Right. And the thing is smoking. Actually, the word is smoking it. And so the, the the one they're seeing in the picture is like a a, a whole uh, part of brisket, right? Yes. But the the ones I really like personally are the ones that are cut the very thin because Yeah, like this right here. There's thinly sliced right here. I think thinner than that. Really thinner. Like when you when you try to um, put in a grill, it cooks in about less than two minutes because <sighs> it's really thin, you know what I'm saying? I kinda want I kinda want some. And then you just dip it in uh, some kind of a sauce. sauce. Yeah, right. there you go. So you don't have to uh, people used to smoke it, right? Then you put it in the grill and use the smoke to uh, cook it, right? They right. use uh, types of wood and it really matters because how it holds the flavor, keeps in the flavor, right? Mm-hmm. That's give you like a little crispiness on top. Uh, besides eating, you can eat it uh, by yourself. You just eat the meat as is. No, I'm probably gonna eat it with rice. It's just because it's rich. It's too rich when it comes to like, you know, it's protein, right? Yes, yeah, so you can toss it into a burger. Oh yeah, I guess to celebrate three D's, three observances today, but you have this, a brisket burger. This is really the main well, part of, out of the sun. Uh, main part of the barbecue, right? Like you, you, you don't have to eat by yourself. You can mix it with mashed potatoes. Oh yeah, and, there you uh, go. Macaroni and salad. You know, you can mix it, but you can eat it by itself. I see. I actually tried it in some of my noodles, like uh, some really? ramen. Yeah, some ramen has some uh, brisket. Oh well, yeah, but not not smoked. No, no, not smoked burger. <laughs> okay. Of course not. Yeah, it'll be. The smokiness is too rich for the broth itself. Well, yeah, so. and it's it's not gonna con uh, complement each other. It's like the way different ways that they were cooked, you know. And then you're gonna put them together. No, I don't think so. It's so funny. Like <laughs> on a hot day, the only thing you want to do is to cook more hot meat. Yeah. Uh, no, it's okay <laughs> because it doesn't have soup. You know, with barbecue in right. the summertime works because you're literally taking out the juice out of the, the meat. It's dry. No, you want the juice in the meat. Well, what I'm saying it's is it, 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 it's not uh, it's, it's not swimming on a soup, no, which is soup. perfect yeah. for winter time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But burgers, brisket. Well, I'm telling you, brisket burger while Summer staying out here. of the sun. Summer is here. That's Summer how you celebrate here. these three observances. All right. Today in history. Da, 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 da. Da, da, in 1999, oh no, my face is blocking the words, but I'll move it sometime. Right? Okay. Right. Leonardo da Vinci masterpiece, The Last Supper, right here, right? Mm -hmm. It's put back on display after 20 year, 22 years of restoration. Oh, really? So, yeah, so these paintings, right? Over time, there's. The a, age. They, they don't age itself, it's just the environment that is creating like dust. Oil, people yeah, yeah. touching it. Yeah, isn't it, that what aging is? Like, yeah, yeah, uh, it kind of gets damaged over time, even without by, kind of physical interference. By, yeah, by outside factors. Mm -hmm. Like for us, we age from the inside out. What? When and these, outside too, we get wrinkles and stuff when we go when we get old. Yeah, but that's from the inside though. <laughs> Your oh, it is. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this painting, right? Like I said, over the years, grime, all this dust, oil, particle that's in the air gets mm -hmm. stuck on the surface, and it really, you know, alters the colors that it's supposed to be. Right. So when you see these restorations, right, they remove a layer of filth off of it, and you see the color in its true splendor. Mm-hmm. And like I said, this painting is one of the well-known piece of uh, Leo da Vinci, right? Because mm -hmm. it's from the Renaissance. Renaissance was more like we call it more of an enlightening phase of cultural cultural society. I'm looking for some burgers in the picture, but there, there are no burgers or brisket. No, I'm pretty sure it's just bread. It's bread. <laughs> bread and wine. Bread and wine. <laughs> so, like I said, it took a, 22 years. 22, just think about it, JR. Yeah. Restoring Respect. actually is hard too, you know, because you gotta... You gotta be very know, delicate. Yeah, not only that, you have to actually apply the right the, the correct colors you know uh, just one wrong color is going to change it some people do color correction the other people just straight up do cleaning because they don't risk uh, damaging mm -hmm. the yeah, yeah. original art 22 years can you dedicate 22 year life just looking at one painting just carefully day in day out just removing layers i mean these layers. days arts right. can be pr uh, preserved now because it's uh, a lot of a lot of arts that are being produced now are uh, digitally 
are in digital meaning that you preserve the the original content or the color combination and stuff like that and then you just have to print it when you need to right 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 but i mean nothing beats the the the, the original uh, way of doing paintings like oil paintings and right. stuff like that I'm physical it's cool because it says the last supper and i'm looking at the background it looks like the sun is setting do you see it oh uh, the contrary i thought the sun is uh rising but then why is it be a last supper supper is usually a dinner that's true right? that's true and you know what's the weird part of the uh, picture too? It's how they always sit on one side of the table. It's what? They always sit on one side of the table. Well, because they have become a pic- like a group picture. <laughs> oh, they invented a digital camera back then? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. It's called a painting, Joe. That's like, serious. everyone, can, can everyone move to one side, please, so we can like paint you guys. They, they don't have the movie imagine because back in the day, there are no pictures. But, you know, we're just kidding because it's painting. So yes, it's a right. visualization of the painter. Right. So. All right, moving on to the notable birth, we have Ian Fleming in 1908. He was born in Mayfair, London. Is he a director? England. No, or author, author. Yes. Okay, okay. He was a Navy intelligence uh, officer, so he worked during the uh, Second World War, right? Oh. And he helped uh, plan out the Operation Golden Eye. Oh. And after that, he wrote some novels about his about a figure named Bond. James Mr. Bond. Bond. Code name, what? What's his code? 007. 007. So Ian Fleming, right? He's the he's the mind. He's a mind, he's a James, Bond. James Bond, right? And <clears throat> well his life as a what do you call it? A soldier, right? A Navy officer during the Second World War mm-hmm. actually gave him some intel. I guess he so you about can say, that world. Yeah, so you can say he's the uh, the actual M in the movie. Because you know how James Bond yes. reports to a person named M? He, he, so he's he's M in real life because he's the one who made James Bond. Right, right. That's cool. Uh, or I guess I because his first name is Ian. I forgot his middle name. It's like Lancaster or something. Right? It's probably Eskrid. Ian Eskrid <laughs> Fleming. <laughs> but Ian is old then. Ian is like over <laughs> over a hundred year old then. Anyways, are you a big fan of James Bond? I am definitely. What is your favorite movie? Uh, who's the, your favorite actor? Oh, oh, my current James, Bo- Bo- my current James Bond actor or favorite James Bond actor Daniel is Daniel Craig. Craig because his approach to James Bond is less classy, Craig. and uh, he is it's something for a change. He's, he's more of an action character. <clears throat> when you, when, yeah, Craig is more when action. you talk about James Bond, <clears throat> what's going on with my throat? It's getting dry. Anyways, when you talk about James Bond, uh, you know, you you uh, combine intellect with classiness and gadgets right together you know but with daniel craig's uh version of james bond he would rather use fists than devices you know yeah it's like oh this is a new james bond you know like the classy uh part of james bond was kind of taken away the other james bond were more like uh they use their uh they use their seducing intellect to you know solve the issues mm-hmm. right daniel craig just straight up beat them up really yeah so like what other uh James Bond character you know of? Uh, actors, human actors. Actors, actors, yeah. Uh, let's see. Sean Connery. Sean became, Connery. Uh, yes. James Bond. Well, uh, one of the best uh, James Bond was Sean Connery too, for me at least. You know. Uh, Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Um, Brosnan, yeah. The world is not enough. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I think it was the world. It's the world is time. not enough. Yeah. Uh, I just remember it on the cover of GoldenEye, the <laughs> Nintendo 64 game. Golden Eye was like remade twice already because there's a Golden Eye for uh, uh, for for the different actor, like a recent one, you know. Yeah, Casino character. Royale. Oh yeah, because Casino Royale is a really good movie. I like it when they, he was playing uh, poker on the ship with mm-hmm. uh, like Shroof. But the thing was, uh, Casino Royale <laughs> was actually the first book in the series of the James Bonds. It was released in 1953. Mm. So James uh, Casino Royale. What other movies do you know? There's Doctor No. Uh, Oh yeah, Doctor No is Doctor also Doctor. another uh, uh, what do you call this? Like James Bond movie? Yeah, right? it's one of the, what's what's his <clears throat> name? You have, you have Spectre. That was a movie though. Spectre was a movie. That's a organization that is is it under uh, Doctor No? What's so, what, right? what's that James Bond movie that they went to Mexico? I I get it. That's with Daniel I think Spectre, Craig. I think Spectre. Is that Spectre? I think so. Okay, I'm not too sure. But who was <clears> the <throat> I think he was, he was the leader of the bad guys? The Spectre. Who's the, what's his name? Oh, that's Brofield, right? Brofield, Brofield. That's my weakness about James Bond. I don't remember the names of the yeah, uh, yeah. The, the enemies pretty much. You just watch it with action, right? Yeah, just like uh, when I watch um, 
uh, Mission Impossible. I kind of forget the the names of the enemies. You know, I just I just stick with Ethan Hunt. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, like Ethan. Uh, let live, let die. That's another one, I think. Um, Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Yeah, there you go. There, uh, there's a lot. There's Chi Chi Bang Bang. Uh, what other? Wait, one? that's a James Bond movie. Yeah, that's actually a James Bond movie. No way. It is, yeah. No, no I don't believe it. Is it a movie? You. Is it a movie? No, it's a, it was a book. I know for sure it's a book. I don't know if it's really? a movie. Really? Oh, wow. Movie, but... I didn't know that. Uh, I'm blanking out, but there's a lot of movies. Well, know. there's a lot. There's a lot. Definitely there's a lot. But you see how the progression, right? It's usually a spy going around doing world missions. Yes. Like that, right? I mean, the suspense of, uh, you know, being stealthy. Yeah. Uh, not not as hiding, but less a blending into the environment to get intel and stuff. That's that's what James Bond is all about, and right? You know what? You know what means you made it big uh, as a cultural impact? Mm -hmm. We have a parody. So what was the parody oh. of James Bond? Oh, I don't know. Austin Powers. Really? Remember Austin Powers? Yeah, like I know Austin British Powers, spy? but I, I, I didn't know it. Uh, he, like, he was like a British So spy, it's more of a indirect? Uh, no, it was like a direct. Direct parody of James really? Bond, man. He's yeah, a, baby. Yeah, he's a spy. <laughs> Come on, John. Yeah, John. JR. <laughs> I might wear something. So happy birthday to Mr. Ian and thank Fleming. You, yeah, thank you, Mr. Ian Fleming, for uh, years creating. and years of entertainment and suspense. Yeah. Yeah. The, what the best, James the best Bond would agent. Do next. Really? Is he? For me, he is. I think the best agent is forty-seven. <laughs> oh, that's uh, Hitman. Yes, Hitman. Okay, all right. <laughs> Hitman, Agent Forty Seven. Moving on. I don't know. Maybe Ethan Hunt. Uh, I just said it a while ago. Is that your like your celebrity uh, crush? Well, not Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more like because the I mean the whole concept of the yes. movie yeah, Mission yeah. Impossible is like it's impossible, but they still solve it. So I mean I, I like the idea. Is the mission really impossible when they have like movies, seven movies now, seven plus <laughs> movies? <laughs> How impossible are the missions now? It's like it's all impossible, but they get through it. It's like telling me waking up, getting out of my bed is a mission impossible right there. You, it is. It's a really hard you, you know what's mission funny? to get yeah. out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You, you know what's funny about these action movies though? Yeah, yeah. It's like the the crime syndicate or the plot gets bigger and bigger, and then a lot of people are saying online that you know if it continues to go. Uh, they're gonna be doing their their movies in space now, just like how Fast and the Furious started as a like a regular racing movie, right? And then it, it suddenly governments uh, involve uh, syndicate is involved. Well, last thing you know, they'll be racing in the space. <laughs> aliens. Aliens. Oh my All gosh! Right. Moving out England to we're going to visit our. Uh, place of the week. Yes. And for a cultural spotlight, we're gonna talk about El Salvador. El Salvador. Oh, you you may end up talking about some of the things I talked about last Monday oh, really? or, or this Monday. So. I, I did share them, share to them a little bit of history of uh, El Salvador. Right, right, right. So let's let's hear what you. So how. this is in South America, mm -hmm. a little bit near the Central America, right? The cultural, the cultural aspect of uh, of El Salvador, right? Like all Southern American or Central American uh, country, they're influenced from the Mesoamerican, mm -hmm. right? The early days Native American, the indigenous people, right? Yeah. We're talking about the Mayan people, those people who have uh, a huge cultural impact, and to this day, some of their monuments and structures are still there in El Salvador, right? And even though uh, they've been colonized, right? By the Spanish. By the Spanish. And they have a little bit, they use uh, the official language is like Castilian Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. However, they're more a central part of El Salvador. They use more of an indigenous uh, aspect to it, to their language, in terms of that, right? And besides that, their buildings, right, span a huge amount, mostly due to people who visit them. Mm -hmm. So. You have the Mesoamericans, the uh, traditional indigenous people building the buildings, right? You have those uh, steps, uh, pyramids, and steps, all that. Steps, pyramids, yeah. Uh -huh. They have the Spanish uh, influence, right? With the, the Baroque buildings. Baroque is like a style building from the 17th and 18th centuries of Europe. Mm -hmm. Is it the one that we were seeing in the picture right now? It's kind of like that. It's similar. It's more similar. modern. Yeah, okay. more modern with your dome top and mm -hmm. a little spiky, right? And for uh, El Salvador, majority of them is uh, Roman Catholic, so there is some. Yes. some 
Catholicism in uh, we call it influence in their building major. Some of them are Christian too, and you can see in their buildings too. You have it's kind of like Gothic too. Mm -hmm. And the music, the music itself, it incorporates all the incorporates all the cultures that they were uh, influenced by. Uh, but most of it is mostly from Mesoamerican, so like the Central American indigenous people. Mm -hmm. So El Salvador is a nice place. If I, I would travel there too in like a span of all the South American country, right? Right, right. So that is the place of the week, El Salvador. Right. Okay, moving on to handle of the day. All right. Stuff of the week. Check the theme. We Let's have a see. theme. The theme is a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult this week. Really? Okay. Yes. Well, so we will try. We will see. Uh, you don't have a preview, so it was a little bit trickier this time. Yeah. Be usually, before we start a video, uh, I run through the slides, the stuff, to make sure everything's uh, correct. That's just. Jar has a little sneak peek and try. He figures out, and throughout the beginning, he'll figure it out. But mm -hmm. he didn't have it this time, so we'll see. Nah, it's fine. It's just like one of those impossible <sighs> missions oh. that I have to, uh, you know, finish, accomplish. Then, then, then. Dun, 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 dun. I'm back. Oh, okay. Sleepy orange. It's Sleepy not orange. Even orange. Come on. That's the reason why. But because sleepy? What? No. Well, I'll tell you why. So, <laughs> what kind of animal is this? It's mainly an insect, right? What mm -hmm. kind of insect is it? Yeah. It's a flying butter. It's a butterfly. Yes. <laughs> butterfly. Look how beautiful a butterfly is close up, you know? I know. Sometimes it's, I don't know, it flies to get near you. Like, ah, oh, get away. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm afraid <laughs> of, of butterflies. I'm afraid of everything, dude. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they're they're really gorgeous. Yeah, but not to your face and like poking your eyes with their you know plus biscuits. You know, <laughs> freaking scary. So these are North American butterfly, normally found in West Indies and Costa Rica and Belize, right? Super orange. Yeah, I guess you could say uh, that the wings mm -hmm. uh, they are they, they kind of look more basic than other beautiful looking uh, uh, yeah, patterns does, butterflies. You know, it's it's pretty much like a simple, a simple, a single colored, mono colored. Right. Wings. So when you look at this, right? Why is it called sleepy orange when it's bright yellow? Well, they have two forms. They, they have. have Am I color blood, But there's a touch of green. It's no, like green and yellow. No, it's more black. The black markings on his uh, wings. Okay. So these guys are yellow with bright red markings, it's a little bit reddish, and this is their summer form, their summer dressing. Oh, they change colors. They didn't change nice. colors. Nice. Correct. And during the winter, they're more true to their name. They're more browner and orange, mm. and the markings on the back is more prominent. You can see it more better. Nice. So one of the misnomers, right? You know how people see an animal and they try to name it, right? They yeah. call them sleepy orange because they thought they just look like they're always sleeping. <laughs> Oh, and really? have the marking what? and the marking and how the do markings they tell it? and the markings on their uh, wings, right? It look like sleeping eyes. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So the markings in their wings, yes, not, not because like, of their uh, actual it's eyes. The eyes sleeping, right? And same to his name, it's orange. Too. Okay. But contrast to his name, they're easily startled and they can fly around really fast. They're rabbit flyers, <laughs> so they're really <laughs> sleepy. They're sleep flying. Have you have you sleepwalked before? I have not. I did. And you know what? Why? Uh, interestingly, I sleepwalk with my sister. We both sleepwalk, oh, I heard this, yeah. holding hands, and we were we were sharing the same dream that you we were, were lost in the mall. The mall. Yeah, that is so yeah. weird, but I don't know. Is she Life is your, weird. She your identical twin? No, no, no. Okay, that'd be cool if it was. So like you have telepathically. <laughs> that is just so weird, though. That I, I would never forget that night. You okay. Know, and then my mom woke us up. So, so these guys. What unique about these guys <laughs> are they can. They well, they are the host plant that they grow on, on, right? As a pupil, caterpillar, and a butterfly is the senna plant, and we will talk about the senna plant. Okay. So these guys can eat senna without some adverse effects, and we will learn why senna, this flower, right, has such a bad effects. That, but even though the sleepy orange can are able to eat it, and they grow on it too. Oh really? Okay. Right. So the plant of the day is the senna, senna. Cell azandrina. So it looks beautiful. It is beautiful. It's a uh, yellow with petals, like five petals with a stamen, right? And they have some uh, beans, some legumes, fruit. Yes. The, uh, the, the legume fruit are uh, <laughs> oblong, so it's not really spherical. It's a little bit kind of like a kidney, right? You know what? And it's compressed, flat, and it has six seed. Yes. You know those people who are uh, using the petals of flowers to do medicine, right? No, like not what? Uh, love me, love me not oh. kind of option like that. Don't do I that. I mean, if if you look at You're the number of petals, you literally could 
could could know the answer if it's even numbers. Yeah, I, I, know, I know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Right? That's I don't know. Well, but, some people are <laughs> madly in love. They they can't really pay attention. So they love just, me, uh, love me not. Love me, love me not. So these guys natively they <laughs> grow in Egypt, and oh, okay. they are plucked, dried, and packaged in uh, palm leaves and uh, sent out to trade. Okay. So, Using herbalism, right? So herb, herbs, herbal tea and stuff like that. It's supposed to have some oh, you can use it for, for yeah. tea? But cool. you shouldn't. Because you know why? No, it why? is a laxative. What is a laxative? Oh, okay. It's, 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 stimu it's a stimulant uh, laxative, right? That basically... Helps you do number two. Yes, it basically helps the contraction in your stomachs and retain water in the, the waste products in your body and you can uh, expel it out of your body. Number two. I mean, uh, tea kind of helps you do that. Yeah, but this is specifically what it is. And the reason why you can dry it, you can make medica uh, medication. The medication itself is called Senna. It's a laxative. <laughs> okay. So it helps for constipation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And why does this relate to the sleepy orange? That's what that's what they eat, no? They can eat it, they can grow on it. And what do you mean grow on it? Like mature. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Not grow. They don't grow actually from the flower. I know. That the kind of butterfly comes, like lay the egg, the egg grows in the caterpillar, the caterpillar can eat the uh, petals so, without, you know, being induced by the laxative the, properties. The laxative, okay. So other animals that eat these flowers, they will have... Some number two problems. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but for us humans, right? Sometimes we have constipation because <laughs> we're eating a lot of hamburgers, a lot of brisket, right? <laughs> yeah. We got to get that out of our system. We don't want a uh, bowel obstruction, right? We take laxative. Got like some Santa. Get some Santa right. right there. Very good. So moving on to the hour of the day. We have still life of flowers, shells, and insects. It doesn't really relate to the Senna aspect, right? But it is a picture, beautiful picture by uh, Balthazar van der Aas in 1635. It's an oil on canvas, right? And you can see it's future uh, flower that we talked about the Senna, right? But it's not really a Senna, it's just a typical yellow flower. And then if you guys notice, you there are also butterflies, butterflies in there. Just shell. try to pause this video if you want to take a look at the butterfly and try to look it up. Yeah, butterflies look right for there. it. Yeah. There's yeah, one. I there's see one. one. There's one right there. There's only one? No, there's another one. I see, oh. I see some bees. I see There's a dragonfly. Spiders. I see a caterpillar. I see a grasshopper. Yeah. And there's some shells. So what is a still life? Still life is basically a, uh, in real life, right? They set up um, a scene with actual real flowers. So, okay. So the artist, right? Mr. Van der Ass, right? Balthazar, right? He just drew what he sees that's what a still life is mm. for me for you right if we if you guys come back photograph yeah exactly exactly like a really long time photograph, photograph. yeah yeah uh -huh. by hand yeah yeah uh -huh. and you gotta be very talented so we can do still life here we can put like a piece of apple fruit stuff that you think is really pretty you put it aside you sit there and you just draw what you see right that's right. still life so like i said it doesn't really relate too much about it but it does have a butterfly and a flower so that's how i connect it together right it's a very beautiful painting. I like it. It's a little bit dark, somber, and the bright contrast of the flower just really pops up. And same with the shells. It's the pearlescence, right? The little shiny part of the shell, the white part, really lights it up the mm -hmm. dim background where you see the butterflies and the dying flowers. Uh, I was going to comment on the flowers that are they don't look lively, but well, yeah, that's you're what right. Still life is. The still life is when you send long time drawing, right? The flowers are bound to die. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So moving on to science fact of the day, we have Senna uh, glycoside. No, oh, it's the same name as the flower. Yes, exactly, because uh, they use the flower as a laxative, right? They dry it, they crush it, and they put some other components, the glycoside, into it. You cannot give us a 3D pictures of that anymore because the numbers are too too many. Yeah, right there. You, got you have 42 carbon. carbons, 38 hydrogens, and <laughs> 20, 20 oxygen. oxygen. So while you hear us talk, right, you can try to find out. I can, I can see there's 20... Uh, I mean, awesome. it's it's uh, <clears throat> marked by letters, right? So. And when you see the R, right? There's an R right there. Oh yeah, what's the R? Uh, R is like a, a, a like a what do you call it? Like a placeholder. So you see it in the yellow box right there, right? Where it says R equals to C O O H, right? It's basically like this is a group that you can replace in there. It can either be C O O H or, or C H two O H. Okay. If you put that, it would be called senicide senicide C or senicide A. a. Right. Okay. So, like I said, right, this is used as a laxative, right? And over 1 million prescription, right, is used in America. Because, mm. you know, 
Usually when you're older, right, the muscles in your stomach doesn't contract as well as it can. And you have bowel obstruction, right? And you got to be regular. Yeah. You got to get your fiber. And sometimes that doesn't help enough. Because the fiber, fiber, right? what fiber does is really helps you compact it, it, the weight. Collect, it, it collects the weight. But it's not I mean, really waste, moving it. It's not really moving it. Oh, so you're going to need some uh, trigger. So this, Something is, that uh, triggers it. this medication is a stimulant. Like push it. Uh-huh. So the medication is called Senna itself. There's Jerry Knot, uh, Senna Knot. There's other names for it, but it is a stimulant laxative. And like I said, you use it to remove bowel obstruction, right? People take it before a major surgery because you don't operate on a full stomach. That's why when you go on like a colonoscopy? colonoscopy, you do that too, yeah, because you don't want to move your camera up your, uh, your intestines. Butt. Yeah. Up I'm trying to avoid that word, <laughs> but hey, it's science. <laughs> it, so. it is science, yeah. So the medication usually works 30 minutes after you take it, right? You can take it orally or okay. Rectally. Yeah. So it's not like in the movies, like once they no, you no, know, no. once uh, they they slip like a, no, no, a no, powder no. of um, laxative and then you know like someone drinks it, no, like immediately they would feel no. it. They, they would feel their tummy rumbling. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not, not like that. But this plant has been used a long time ago, right? Like, I'm talking about like the 700s CE, right? Uh-huh, like a very, 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 very long, long time. time ago. And they found the useful, what do you call it, the useful effects of to eating this plant. Because like some people do have constipation and you want to get rid of it, right? And yeah, I'm pretty sure some, I know a couple of people, I, you know, I've seen uh, that's mostly elderly, they take it because they don't have their, their the intestines is not as strong as they are, mm -hmm. and they take senna okay. as a way to remove all the waste products, the bowel obstruction, right? So, what is the theme? It's more science-based this time. Okay. So, it'll be tricky, but I'll move, move forward, and I'm going to show you. The word of the day is... Does laxative. it have something to, Oh, I was going to ask if it has something to do with... Senna. Number two. Yeah. Oh, close. It does. Laxative. Close. Laxative, right? It is an adjective, and I'm gonna smoke for you guys. It's an adjective. It's an adjective and oh. a noun. It can be a noun too. Okay, okay. Like a noun, like a laxative drug. Yes. A laxative okay. drug. The laxative part of the drug part is the adjective part. It's describing what kind of drug it is. It's yeah, yeah. A okay. Drug. Or but you, you can use the word laxative by itself. It's a shorthand way to say it's a medication that has laxative properties. So laxative, okay. right? So it's L A X, not the airport. L A X. <laughs> a T I V E. So laxative. So, it's an adjective, I'm going to describe an adjective, right, but it's a noun itself. <clears throat> it's tending to stimulate or facilitate evacuation of the bowels. Yeah, that's another word, evacuating your bowels. Yeah, there you go. So... I mean, we can we, we can make uh, jokes about it all day, but, but... it's very important. It's a very important It's very progress. important. It's also, it can also be a serious problem if it you is. are not regularly, uh, you know... Uh, uh, evacuating your bowels. Exactly. Disposing right. of these wastes in your body. Right. Because, like... Uh, evacuating your bowels is the same thing like taking out your trash every week. If yes. you do it regularly, right? It just piles up and your house just loses value and it just becomes... Yeah, and it will invite more germs it's and like bacteria. A do you want that on your body, Jack? Of course not. Do you want a clean house? Of course. You want a clean body? Yes. Be regular. There you go. Yeah, eat fibers, um, drink a lot of water, hydrate yourself. The one issue is the reason why the, the waste product stays in your body because they don't have enough uh, water retention. Okay. Yeah, some people take uh, fibers to get more water into the waste product so they can get more bigger so the muscle can contract it and push it out. Okay. If you can't, you need stimulants like laxative, like we talk about Senna, right? There's other, um, what do you call it, laxative you can take. Epicat. Well, mm -hmm. no, wait, that, that's, that's not a laxative, that's more like a immediate. It's uh, you vomit, it makes you vomit. Uh, so it's what do you call this? MOM. Yeah, milk of magnesia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that. Um, Donkey say there's a lot of laxatives. Uh, I've seen some medication where it's in a chocolate form. You can eat it. Okay. Yeah. So, laxative. Be careful. Don't take it unnecessarily. Holy it prescribed by your physician or a health medical expert. There we go. So the theme is, you know, laxative. We have to send a plant that is is a main main uh the theme attraction. is evacuation. <laughs> I guess. No. Evacuation of the bowel. CB is for some. Oh, okay. There so we you go. have the sleepy orange a butterfly that can that, that grows on there <laughs> and eats it. And uh, we have scent of the plant that what the medication derived from. Very important, especially if you like eating a lot of hamburgers and uh, brisket. brisket, right? Because like meat products, right? They're 
They're big. They're big, yes. They're hard, sometimes they're hard to digest, right? Yep. You can't even chew it fully. There's some people just... Tell me about it. That's why I want to do the... That's, a, that's a very important part, guys. You have to chew your food uh, thoroughly. Yeah. One, to remove any choking hazard, right? Two, speed up digestion. Mm -hmm. If you don't chew it, right, you have undigested, uh, what do you call it? It's gonna stay there longer. Yeah. If it stays there longer, it's gonna be, it, it's gonna make you feel more bloated. Exactly. Longer. So, so <laughs> with such a weird episode, but it is very important though. It's very important to understand it's how- such a weird episode. It is, we're talking about, you know, stuff that we normally don't talk about, right? But uh -huh. it is very important. So that is the end of our show. Yay! And that is the last Friday of the month. And, I will see you guys next Friday in June. Yes. No show Monday. Again, no show Monday. We return no on Tuesday. So we're going to see each other on Tuesday. Tuesday. All right. Thank you guys for watching any time of the day. Congratulations to the raffle winners. And have a longer weekend this weekend because, it, you know, we're off three days. Do so. you have any plans? I don't know. Eating burgers. <laughs> eating burgers. Yeah, I can see some. Uh, some relatives for more day. Okay, well, yeah. no, usually my weekend is not really planned because it's, uh, what do you call this? It's cleaning time. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm busy the whole day, week. You so. have like a day off of work, you just want to spend it, clean your house. Yeah, vacuum, relaxing. vacuum the carpet, clean the bathroom, you know, those kinds of things. You don't want to back up, right? You don't have to be dirty. You keep your house clean. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All, All right. right, thank you guys very much for supporting us. Get it cut off. And see you next time. Bye.